What's up everyone, it's Fact. Today we will take a look at the T-72 tank's performance in 1991 Gulf War and see why it performed poorly. Iraq is used 3 to 4 versions of T-72. First one was T-72 Ural, which was the first ever version of T-72 to enter production. Iraqis purchased 100 tanks from Soviets in 1979 and 1980, but following the outbreak of Iran-Iraqi war, Soviets restricted their sales to Iraq. So, Iraq turned to countries that also used T-72, or the T-72M variant, which was the model used by other nations of Warsaw Pact. Thus, in 1982, Poland sold Iraq a batch of 250 T-72M tanks, following in later years the improved T-72M1. Iraq purchased a total of 1,038 T-72s of all types, mostly from Poland. In late 1980s, there were plans to start the production at local Iraq factories. The tank was to be named Assad Babil, or Lion of Babylon. Polish officials indicate that none were ever completed, even though a T-72 displayed at Iraqi arms show in 1988 was claimed to be a locally built tank. As a result of USSR's export policy, clients such as Iraq did not receive tanks comparable in quality to the best Soviet tanks. In 1990, the best Iraqi version of T-72 was T-72M1, roughly equivalent to the Soviet T-72A, which was already a decade old and not as well armored as the newer T-72B or the preferred T-80B series. Just as importantly, the Soviet Union did not export its best tank ammunition. The Iraqi army relied primarily on second-rate ammunition for its T-72 tanks. Now, let's take a look at the stats of T-72s used by Iraqis in Gulf War. The armor values were the following. T-72 Ural had 380mm of armor protection against armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabet projectiles and 410mm equivalent of heat protection. T-72M had the same armor values. T-72M1 had 400mm versus AP FSDS and 490mm against heat. In comparison, AP FSDS projectile used by US in Gulf War was M829A1, which had 570mm pen penetration at 2 km, more than enough to take out Iraqi tanks. Iraqis used several armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding Sabet ammunition types, latest one being from 1972. They used four different projectiles. 3VBM3, with 290mm penetration in 2 km, made in 1962. 3VBM6, with 315mm penetration at 2 km, made in 1968. 3VBM7, with 340mm penetration in 2 km, made in 1972, and 3 vbm 8 with 330mm penetration at 2 km, also made in 1972. Again, for comparison, M1A1, tank used by US in Gulf War, had the armor equivalent to 600mm versus APF SDS, and M1A1 HA, also used by US, had 800 mm protection against armor piercing fin stabilizer discarding Sabre projectiles. So, Iraqis had no chance of penetrating the superior armor of US tanks. T-72 suffered from more issues, such as T-72 Euro and T-72M having the old coincidental rangefinder, and even the T-72M1 that had a laser rangefinder had an old version which used a complicated process of range measurement which took a longer time to measure the range than the US ones and was useless in foggy and stormy conditions. They were also equipped with uh, infrared searchlights which had no more range than 800 meters for the gunner and 400 meters for the commander. They also had poor training and rarely took care of their tanks, which led to gun barrel c erosions and other malfunctions inside the tanks. They also used poor tactics, such as entrenching by building a soft sand wall around the tank, which was useless against 
APV SDS rounds. So, in conclusion, the performance of T-72 in Gulf War cannot be regarded as a performance of T-72 tanks used by Russian military. It is nothing more than a presentation of bad version of a good tank used in wrong hands. Just as an example, Kuwait used M84A tanks which proved excellent but for nothing more than a Yugoslav improved copy of T-72 M1 tank. That is it, thanks for watching. If you think I made a mistake somewhere, feel free to correct me in the comment section down below. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.